Enough is enough. I have been cutting for over three months now and I feel like I have made zero progress. That is, until now. I dusted off one of the oldest tricks in the book that I used for weight loss back then, and this has been my experience with intermittent fasting for 30 days on my cut. So of course, I'm gonna have to start this off with looking at my body composition and what it looked like before and after, because all in all, this experiment was done to see how much fat I could lose as I'm currently on a cut. Now, I'm gonna let the pictures speak for themselves, and honestly, I wouldn't say I made like any drastic change or anything, but it's only been a month of progress, and this is something that I'm gonna keep doing for probably another two months or so. But I would say for one month of progress, I'm happy with it. I've actually lost a decent amount of weight and I think it's fat. I mean, I'm still pretty strong in the gym, but hey, only time will tell, right? No, yes, I don't have like a super sick physique in only one month, but let's be honest, if you want to get a sick physique in only one month, you're going to need to take a certain amount of substances to get there. So instead, how about I talk about other ways that intermittent fasting has changed my life? But first, I want to talk about how I actually incorporated it into my daily life because I think that's just as important so that you can get the ball rolling if you want to try this yourself. There were a few things that I had to change, obviously, because when you're restricting your feeding that hard, things are going to have to change. So let's start from the morning, which is my morning coffees. As you all know, I love my morning iced lattes and well, milk has calories. I'm not allowed to have that shit no more, but black coffee does not break a fast. So what I started doing is I just started drinking my morning coffees black and I just make iced Americanos now. And if you know anything about coffee, it's, it's just espresso and water. <laughs> just like how the ranchers did it. So now I can still get my morning caffeine and my energy and I don't have to worry about the calories so I can still keep my fast going. And next we got to talk about lifting and cardio because I'm someone who likes to do their exercise in the morning and I don't like to wait until the afternoon and that's when I can start eating and as you can tell I had to make it work somehow. So I just do my cardio and my lifting fasted. And honestly, I don't really notice that much of a difference, especially in terms of energy. It's more like, I feel like I'm more focused. I think that's one thing to say. And I think the reason is because I know that once my workout's done, it's usually around noon or so. So I can just get into eating and it's almost like, okay, once you finish this workout, you can have your breakfast. So it almost makes you want to stay on track and just get it done. And that's pretty much all that's changed in the morning. But we got to talk about the evening because that's when things really get serious and you'll really notice it. Because if you've ever done time restricted feeding, you know that the morning is not the issue. It's actually the evening once you have started to digest and you get hungry, especially before you want to go to bed. So once I hit the end of my feeding window, which is usually around 5 or 7 p.m., somewhere between that range, I just stop eating. It's that simple. Like, you just don't eat calories. So from this point until I go to bed, well, obviously I'm not eating food, so what am I doing? I'm drinking water or if I'm feeling up to it and I feel like I want like a treat, then I'll just drink like a bubbly or something. Just some sort of carbonated water that has no calories in it. Now, obviously I am a huge late snacker and I've already talked about this in previous videos, but this has actually been a game changer when it comes to stopping late snacking and overall just stopping those cravings that I usually get that are later in the evening. I found that I'm someone who gets the most cravings, especially before bed. So having the hard cutoff of like 6 p.m., it just cuts off all of those cravings. And if I do get a craving, well, I'll just drink extra water to help with the hunger or I'll just have a bubbly. And honestly, that usually kills the craving right there. Now, going to bed hungry is something that I usually never worried about before because I would just be eating all throughout the day. But now I already talked about it before, but you're going to get hungry, especially before bed. At first, it's going to bother you. And you know what? There are some nights where I find that it's bothering me more than others, but I would say overall, I'm still able to fall asleep within, I'd say, 10 to 15 minutes, at least according to my aura ring. And I mean, what more could you ask for? But yeah, trying to go to bed when you're hungry kind of sucks. But the thing is, is that your sleep quality gets way worse when you go to bed on a full stomach. And I mean, when you're digesting, your body just cannot rest. So I have noticed that my overall quality of sleep has been going up, especially because I'm not going to bed with a full stomach. And there actually was one night where I went to bed on a full stomach because I did not fast and I ate really late, like I'm talking mid night eating and it killed my sleep quality but I'll talk about that a little bit later but this actually takes me to my next point which is what happened to my overall health because in the end intermittent fasting is a weight loss tool but it's also a tool to help fix your overall health so as you may know I'm currently on Accutane I'm on month five now I just about finished month four and with that I'm required to do monthly blood work just to see you know my cholesterol my triglycerides are still all good because it has a pretty big effect on your lipid panel, I think is what it's called. So I figured, hey, if I'm going to be getting monthly blood work for free and it's all part of this uh, this medication I'm taking, then why not experiment on myself? 
So when I did intermittent fasting, I did my blood work and then I started my intermittent fast. So I did one full month and then I did blood work actually recently, which was the next month. So I had a full month of what happened to my results when I was doing intermittent fasting and the results are interesting. But before I share that, I just got to say, Blood work is badass and I highly recommend that you do it because it just gives you real analytical data on if you're actually healthy or not and it's just a good overall indicator if you're actually healthy. I mean the whole point of any of this is you want to be healthy and I think you know getting big and lifting is sick but you gotta prioritize your overall longevity first at least in my opinion. But yeah this is what happens to my body after a month of intermittent fasting at least according to my lab results. But full disclosure I did write this script before I got my results and I was expecting it to just be better but uh let's start with my triglycerides. Those went down which is good to see you ideally don't want it to go too high and let's talk about my HDL which went up and if you know anything about cholesterol there's like LDL the bad cholesterol and then there's HDL the good cholesterol so my HDL went up great to hear it spiked up actually but my LDL also spiked that's the one that you don't want to go up now in an ideal world it would have been HDL up and LDL down but my diet has not been the greatest during this month let me tell you when your feeding window is that short you got to find a way to fill those calories and get full before you run out of time and well fast food is one of the easy ways to do that so processed food, specifically fast food, is what really hurts your cholesterol in the negative way. And you know what? I'm going to save that for a later point because I'm going to talk about it later anyway. Okay, so next I want to talk about my productivity. And I know it's not related to my overall health, but I think productivity is still really important. So I'm going to talk about it here anyway. So as we know, when you're not eating and you're not digesting carbs constantly, your brain just works better. I've talked about this before, but when you're on an empty stomach, it is so much easier to get work done. Now, because the morning is where I do the bulk of my hard work and that's where I eat my frog, link down below if you don't get it. I'm doing my morning routine completely fast now and that just makes me able to focus more intensely for a longer period of time. How could you not want that? I honestly wish I could do intermittent fasting while bulking, but there's no way that would be possible and maybe it might be possible later on, but we'll see when i get there let's just finish this cut and finally drop that fat and then finally when it comes to health we got to talk about my sleep and yeah i already did briefly bring it up but since my body doesn't have to work to digest before going to bed then my body can just focus on recovery and i just feel more rested and my heart rate's able to stabilize earlier in the night and that's what gives you that feeling of being refreshed in the morning well, at least according to the aura ring. And again, I got the data to back it up. And you can actually see, I'll, I'll put a screenshot up here on the screen, but there was actually one night where I didn't fast and I talked about it earlier and that night it killed my sleep because I was just full of food. But I'll talk about that more in the issues I ran into section because it's a good point to bring up. And I know blood work and sleep is all I really had to say, but let's be honest, when you have a good quality sleep and you're able to consistently improve your quality of sleep, your overall health also improves. Your quality of sleep is almost directly related your quality of life. If you get like three hours of shit sleep every night, you probably feel like shit all the time. Don't discount sleep, man. That shit's powerful. Okay. Now, obviously I ran into issues when I was doing time restricted feeding. And first thing I want to talk about is social issues. So over the past month, I've had a few social gatherings, some shorter, some longer, some earlier in the day, some later in the day. And as you could tell, the ones that were later in the day pose a bit of an issue. I'll take the example where this was the night I ate really late and basically there's this place I went to with my friends and they have happy hour after 10 p.m. and they do half price meats and man it is such a good deal you save like 30 bucks like just just saying and it's really good meat I'm talking like smoked brisket man like anyways given my feeding window usually ends around 6 or 7 if the happy hour starts at 10 p.m. you can do some simple math there was just no way around that, man. I didn't even bother fasting that day. I enjoyed myself. So this is a great example of not being perfect with your diet 24 seven. So moving forward with intermittent fasting, I obviously will do my best to fast whenever I can. And I won't just break it just because I can. And I'm, I've actually set a hard rule where I'll try not to break it more than once per week. And this whole month, I only broke it once. I've actually been really good with it. But hey, if there's half price meats past 10 PM, just saying, I don't think I'm going to be fast in the night. And also earlier in the blood work section, I did talk about having to get my food in in pretty much any way possible. And with that said, well, one way to get it in easy is fast food, processed food, you know, garbage. 
So yeah, the quality of my diet did go down a little bit this month, and that's actually what made my cholesterol slightly worse, at least the LDL. However, I was still able to hit my protein and calorie goals, and that's really what matters in the end. I'm still eating a slightly less calories and in a deficit, and I'm getting my one gram per pound of body weight of protein, so at least I'm hitting the basics. But in a nutshell, just to kind of wrap up this issues I ran into section, I think it's really important that I say this. Don't let a diet dictate your life. If there's half price meats after 10 p.m., bro, enjoy yourself life is too short to just be perfect all the time in fact that's miserable have fun from time to time just remember the 80 20 rule and just be good 80 percent of the time and 20 percent of the time go eat some meats right but yeah don't let it dictate your life just let it serve as like a guide okay okay so to conclude this whole month-long experiment i think there are two key points to take away from this whole thing one if you're having a hard time cutting and you're hitting a plateau like i did give this a try. If something isn't working, then try something new. You'll naturally just eat less calories because you're eating in such a shorter window throughout the day, but make sure that you're still lifting, you're still stimulating the muscles, you're eating enough protein, you're sleeping well, and that's all you really got to do. So you make sure you lose fat only and not muscle. Pretty simple. It's just hard in practice. And two, even though that this was just a month long experiment, I'm going to keep this up. I mentioned it before, but I'm going to keep doing this for probably like two, maybe even three more months, depending on the progress that I make, because I've seen great results so far. And this is something I'll not just do this cut, but it'll probably be like a standard procedure now for every cut I do. It works really well. And it honestly just gets the job done. I am sick of cutting, man. If there's anything I could do to help accelerate this process, I'm all ears. And remember that like any tool, it has to work in your lifestyle. Intermittent fasting is not for everybody, but I do hope that you learned something from this video and if you're going to apply this or you have been applying it, let me know. I'm always down to hear your stories. Well, fellas, thanks for watching to the end of episode 10. I can't believe we've done 10 episodes of Home Gym Warrior. As you can tell, I'm dropping the Home Gym Warrior from the title. I just don't think I really need to include it anymore. But yeah, drop a like and a sub and I'll see you in the next one. The Bowflex has arrived, came in two giant boxes. Shit, maybe I can do like one of those snap transitions. It works.